On October 27th, China's former number two Premier Li Keqiang suddenly died after he was swimming in Shanghai. Now, this has drawn a lot of speculations because of out of the ordinary moves by the Chinese regime, as well as questions: Did Xi Jinping order it like a Stalin-style purge, or was it simply a natural cause? People have come out with flowers commemorating him. Yet, since the initial announcement, no further answer has been given by the regime. So let's talk about it. Welcome to China Insider. I'm David Zhang. Now, I recently just moved, so excuse my、uh, really terrible look right now. But I wanted to film this because I think it's super important for us to know. And right off the bat, let's make this clear: Li Keqiang is not some saint. He's not a reformer. He's just another communist official in the system. He opposed Xi Jinping, but he's not really here to reject the Communist Party, which has helped him to climb to a rather powerful position. Right? There's really two lines of thinking, I guess you would call it. One is, was he murdered, and who ordered the execution? And the second would be, did he just simply die he, at the age of 68? Now, all across China, there's some sort of different forms of commemoration, hosting a memorial, displaying his portraits, and sending flower bouquet. But this is not because Li Keqiang is some spectacular official, but rather they're trying to compare it to Xi Jinping, who is relatively worse. And many online were retweeting the song called "Unfortunately Not You" by Fish Long, and that's a reference to why the question of why Xi Jinping isn't the one that's dead. And of course, as the event gathering has gotten larger, they've sent in bodyguards to stop the memorial、uh, type of events from getting bigger. Meanwhile, we're getting so many videos circulating online suggesting that. There's convoys heading to Beijing. Are they in a preparation for what happened prior to 1989 June 4th? And they're expecting the same thing to take place with Li Keqiang. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Let's talk about the death, right? According to the CCP announcement, Li Keqiang died from a heart attack on October 27th after he was taken to the hospital. They couldn't revive him, and、uh, he was pronounced dead. Now, there's a lot of different things here to talk about, but first we have to talk about his relationship with Xi Jinping. Now, back in 2012, there was a contest between Xi and Li, being the two successors. One of them was going to ascend to paramount power, being the leader. The other one would end up being the premier or number two. And after behind-the-scenes party struggle with different factions involved, Xi Jinping ended up being the number one, and Li Keqiang being number two. Now, this sort of You know, there's there's no general election or secret balloting. It was simply different factions of the Communist Party got together in a very opaque sort of work、uh, to negotiate with each other for political power balances, and eventually it came out like that. Since then, Li Keqiang has essentially been called a、um, in name only premier because he didn't hold real political power or any executive authorities, even when it comes to the economy. But he is considered the head of government, being the premier of the state council. And so, during the ten years that Li Keqiang was the premier, he really didn't have a lot of achievements that you can name off the top of your head. He simply had different associations with the Youth League faction, but outside of that, there's only three phrases which was made famous because Li Keqiang said it. The first phrase was that he said about 600 million people in China lived on 1,000 RMB per month, and the second famous quote he said was that. People are doing, and heaven's watching, and so the heaven has eyes for people, suggesting that, of course, whatever they do, the heaven is watching. And the third line is the most ironic one yet, because he says that the Yellow River doesn't flow backwards; reform and opening era will continue. Now, that's very ironic, given that Xi Jinping has essentially reversed it. Right? He's going back to the Mao era before reform and opening up. Now, outside of those three quotes, there's not much we know about Li Keqiang, and I'm being serious. And you also have to know this, right? All CCP officials, Xi Jinping has control over whether or not they live or die. In other words, before a major surgery of some sort, Xi Jinping has to give the go before they're allowed to continue operating on this person. So Xi Jinping essentially allows to tell them to say that no, we're not going to treat Li Keqiang. He will just die. And just like that, they can't save him because the CCP leader said so. This happened with Mao Zedong and former Premier Zhou Enlai. Now, Zhou Enlai, before his death, he had bladder cancer, but Mao ordered that, that they wouldn't disclose his medical details to him and basically let him get to the late stage of the cancer to the point where there's no cure anymore. And so Zhou Enlai died, and subsequently Mao Zedong died a few months later. But just to show you that this is a very factual thing in the CCP, the paramount leader, especially given the、uh, concentration of power that Xi Jinping currently has, he has say over people's life and death. So you could kind of think of it like this: even if Xi Jinping didn't order the assassination of Li Keqiang, his life was still in the hands of Xi Jinping. And here's the interesting part, right? Even if, let's just say that Xi Jinping had nothing to do with 
you know, the death of Li Keqiao. Uh, but everyone's pointing finger at him because everybody thinks that this was the guy that was trying to get into your place back in uh, 2012 and now in 2022 during the uh, third party or, or the third term when they were considering whether or not Xi Jinping would retire. And Li Keqiao was clearly the number one contender for his uh power. And so, you know, even if you didn't order the assassination, people were thinking that Xi Jinping did this. But you could also see this as sort of a Xi Jinping paranoia gone to an extreme level, right? Maybe that the fact that Xi Jinping is paranoid that there's a secret coup in the making where Li Keqiang is set to replace him if that coup is successful by removing Xi from power in some sort of a alliance of different factions against Xi Jinping. So that could also be another line of thinking. And if you consider this picture and this video, this was back during the 20th Party Congress when uh, Hu Jintao was escorted out by the order of Xi Jinping. And you see here, who taps the shoulder of Li Keqiang, who then eventually ends up dead? You know, all these things, are they just aligning up or in coincidental? Who knows? But before we get to the details on his strange death, let's do a sponsor segment. Do you like to wear no-show socks? If you do, you must run into this problem a lot. The sock crumbles and they go into your shoe. So it leaves you feeling yucky and empty, but also at the same time, really uncomfortable. Well, this is why I want to introduce my sponsored product today, which is called Cloud No-Show Socks. Now, you could get a few cheap pairs from the store, or you could get quality products like Cloud No Show, simply because they're made with top premium cotton material and they're form-fitted to your feet with a design to your comfort as the number one priority. They're super comfortable to wear and they don't slip at all. I've been wearing them for a few weeks now. I wear them with loafers as well as sneakers. And I also find that the, the entire design here is very scientific because not only are the materials sweat resistant and also odor resistant, there's also a big difference between form fitted socks and those that slip on. Right now, my sponsor Blueberry Quality Product has a special promotion. If you buy the bundle, five pairs for $65.99, you'll get two additional pairs for free. And so that works out to be about a 21% discount per pair. And so that's actually a really good deal because Cloud No Show Socks, they don't ever do discounts on their own websites or on Amazon. And another point to note is that while this does enjoy that 21% discount, it doesn't actually get the additional 15% discount on all other products in the Blueberry Quality product store. The link is in the description, so make sure to check it out. Okay, so let's get to the details. First, let's start with Biden. Now, this week, Biden met with the top diplomat from China named Wang Yi. And in the readout from the US side, in the end, they uh, mentioned this line that says Biden offers condolence to Premier Li Keqiao. However, when it comes to the Chinese side readout, they skip that entirely. So that's such a strange thing to do. I mean, it's a world leader offering your former second in command a condolence for his passing. Yet on the Chinese readout, they never even mentioned it. They switched it into a uh, offering a greeting to Xi Jinping. Also, if you went on the Chinese website Xinhua and you search for Li Keqiang, you can actually get a post dating back to February of this year, which it says test, 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 test all over. And it says the death of Li Keqiang announcement. And that's really strange. Now, I think maybe there was some technical glitch or something, but uh, it does make people wonder. Now, the key part here, when it comes to healthcare for CCP officials, whether they're retired or they're currently inside the party, they all receive top quality medical access. This is a given, right? Especially for Li Keqiang's level, he was considered a national leader, former number two, right? Despite differences, he should have a team of medical experts all the way, like 24 hours around him watching for his health. So there's no way that if he had pre-existing cardiac conditions or he was prone to heart attacks, that the doctor or the medical team didn't know about it. So the fact that he was allowed to swim and he had a sudden heart attack, that's so strange. Not only that, CCP officials get monthly or even bi-weekly medical examinations. So it's never the case where they don't know about a pre-existing medical condition. That's impossible. Medical history and medical conditions for CCP officials is a top priority for everyone in the key decision-making positions. Like, for example, if former CCP leader Jiang Zemin, who died last year, you know, frogman, he lived till 96. So for somebody like Li Keqiang, who's only 68 in this day and age to die from a simple heart attack, it seems impossible given the amount of medical access we have. And these people, they have access to all sorts of things like organ transplants. We know all about those forced organ harvesting. They have the best drugs available to them. They have the best medical expenses. They have the best medical facility access to them. So it's never the case that they simply can just die unless something fishy happened. So let's now talk about the sequence of events from when the heart attack happened to how he ended up dead. Uh, so Li Keqiang was residing in a Shanghai hotel that's historically houses uh, the CCP officials and he was swimming. 
And so nobody really knows what the security details or the medical details were like at the moment, but he said to have suffered a heart attack while he was swimming. Again, this is a very suspicious part because medical records show whether or not were prohibits uh, that he can swim or not, right? And so after he suffered that, he was then taken to a hospital. Now you have to know that the hotel is strictly controlled and managed or watched over by the Central Security Bureau, which watches is Xi Jinping's uh, direct sort of power surveillance unit against all former CCP officials. And so he was probably surrounded by people that were Xi's people. And no matter what, he was then taken to this hospital called uh, Shu Guan Hospital. Now this hospital is not the number one or number two hospital in the city. And they didn't take him to the Zhongshan Hospital, which would have been allegedly a 96% survival rate for cardiac related issues in that he, it was a top three hospital in the country. And so it's already strange that he wasn't taken there. But then while he was there, what happened was they sent in a team of medical experts from all sorts of different hospitals. They hooked him to the ECMO machine, which is like an external machine that keeps the heart pumping. And um, even then within an hour, they couldn't save him. So then they basically announced that he was dead and uh, during this whole time, right, it, it seems like it, they were very, very urgently trying to get him to kind of just say, well, if we can't save him, then he just go dies. Uh, and so they drove in a military uh, funeral car. And then with, with that, that seems to be the end of it. So it, it's very strange. Now, there are rumors saying that his family has ordered an autopsy and was denied. There's no way we can confirm that because for one, did they really order one or for two, is that even allowed? Math. You see here, there's a lot of secrecy around it, but this person who probably works in the hospital that he was taken to, and it shows that uh, there's, there's a lot of different layers we haven't been able to peel back yet. So just based on that, right, everything seems to point to Xi Jinping being the one who ordered this, and, and he, so the question is why? Why would Xi Jinping want to eliminate Li Keqiang after he had already retired? And uh, you know, what's the political reason behind it? The only one I can think of right now is, like I said earlier, if there was a potential coup where Li Keqiang is becoming the symbol or the, I guess, the leader of that coup, where he will be the replacing Xi Jinping. So Xi Jinping might, might feel like he's threatened, that his power is on the line, his life is on the line, and so he had to eliminate Li Keqiang. Other than that, if you really think about it, there's no reason for a former official to die from a sudden heart attack uh, unless it was naturally. And the announcement of the death was also rather strange too. Most of the deaths actually in the CCP are known months prior. So preparations are done, things like obituaries are written, uh, funeral possessions are arranged and things like that. But the entire death for Li Keqiang was hurried from when he was announced dead to the obituary. Even the CCTV state media anchors didn't have time to change into their black ties. And all these other state media still had colorful uh, web pages, whereas, you know, if a top leader, national level leader dies, everything turns into black and white. And still, some of the newspaper, if you read it, they don't even have a full page to commemorate Li Keqiang. It's just a small, teeny tiny segment dedicated to this former premier, which is super strange. Like they're actively downplaying the presence or the existence of Li Keqiang. And in his own obituary, they spent the last paragraph touting how loyal he was to Xi Jinping's ideas. And basically they turned an obituary into an advertisement for Xi Jinping's achievements. Of course, the same thing happened with Mao Zedong. When Zhou Enlai died, uh, they ended up advertising Mao's achievements in the bottom paragraph. So I guess you do have a repetition here. So let's talk about in the end what this changes, if anything, for the politics of the CCP. Honestly, it doesn't, except for one scenario. If somehow Li Keqiang's death sparks such an outrage or a breaking point or a trigger, right? Like, let's call it a spark um, of what happened essentially parallel to that of 1989 when Hu Yaobang, the former general secretary, died uh, on, I believe, in April 1989. So when he died, they started, the, the students started to amass and that eventually led to the June 4th Tiananmen Square, Tiananmen Square protest, right? But then that's just one of the trigger. Given the current environment in China, it's very hard for these things to happen given the censorship, the political pressure, right? The total surveillance that's happening around the country. It's very hard for them to escalate this into a full-blown student protest. And also considering the fact that Li Keqiang is not personally a very memorable person, you couldn't name any achievement he has, right? Like I said, he only has a few quotes. He is also, while he represents a so-called quote-unquote reformer, he's really not a reformer. So back in the 80s, the uh, former leaders, Hu Yaobang and Zhao Ziyang, they started a group called the Youth League of the Communist Party. Now within this, they basically gather together these young and ambitious guys of the upcoming, 
I guess you could say brilliant young leaders. And the goal here was to form a own power base in, in where they can, uh, I guess you call it to try to reform within the party itself uh, towards things like liberalizations and all that. Except what happened was the rest of the party resisted that, right? And so Hui Albaon and Zhao Ziyang ended up suffering political demise and the Tiananmen Square massacre happened and everything kind of got suppressed and cracked down. And so Li Keqiang himself initially even supported the students during the 1989 protest, but he soon switched to the other side. When time was right, he realized that, oh, it looks like uh, the power is shifting to, you know, cracking down. And so he actually started supporting the massacre. And so you can see that Li Keqiang is a really two-faced man. He's riding the fence. He's not one of the original essence in, in sort of the reform era, right? And so Political reforming is also really hard, especially given the fact that today the so-called Youth League idea or this reforming idea is no longer a reality. Uh, so basically today's Youth League from its creation is already different and it's no longer, there's, there's no liberalization inside the Communist Party anymore, right? That's just wishful thinking. So when all the mainstream media start touting that Li Keqiang is somehow this saint or he tried to save China, that's, that's not true at all. That's actually a fantasization of what is really Li Keqiang. He's just simply a technical hire. Let's just call it that, right? These people, they don't really have political backings from red families, and they got into this position of power because they're told what to do, and they just carry out the order, right? Li Keqiang, if you left him to oppose Xi Jinping, he would never be able to because he knows that. The second he does step out of the line, he will be removed because he has no strong political backing, and so there's no way for him to challenge authority. And that's why he's called in-name only premier because he simply was just there to do a job. Whatever authority he was given, he tried to use it. Step out of the line, he knows he's gone. In the end, I think Li Keqiang's death only shows us how opaque the CCP operations are, and it really doesn't give us anything more than that. But, you know, we'll see how this goes because the resentment towards Xi Jinping is mounting, and that is more important to watch for than the actual death of Li Keqiang. All right, that's it today for the episode on Li Keqiang's death. If you enjoy the content, leave a like, comment below your thoughts. Make sure to tell me what you think the real reason is. Was he purged and eliminated or was it simply a heart attack, natural death? Uh, let me know and subscribe to our channel as well. All right, this is China Insider. I'm David Zhang. See you next time.